Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are. Um, it's uh, two minutes after the hour, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Or, or should we give it another minute, Erica? What do you think? Let's go ahead and get it started. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Emergency Citrus Disease Research and Extension FY 2024 Request for Pre Applications Technical Assistance Webinar. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Biamukama, and uh, together with the ECRE team, we will take you through the uh, this webinar. Next slide, please. So we request that you um, mute your microphones so we don't have any inter interference since this is being recorded. If you have technical issues joining Zoom, please uh, use the phone number shown on the screen uh, to receive assistance. And throughout the presentation, you may type your questions in the chat box or in the question answer uh, box. Uh, these slides and the recording from this uh, webinar will be posted on NEFA's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, uh, you can refer to this uh, link uh, shortly after the webinar. Uh, the, the recording will be posted there. Next slide, please. So here is the ECDRE team uh, from NEFA. Uh, myself, my name is Emmanuel Biancama again. I am a plant pathologist by training and specifically plant disease epidemiology, looking at um, plant vectored diseases. I've been at NEFA for over two years, so I've done this program at least two years now. And I will, I will let uh, Erica introduce herself. Hi, this is Erica Kisner Thomas. I'm an also a national program leader in the Institute of Food Production Sustainability Plant protection with a manual. I'm an entomologist by training. My background is in biological control, and I have worked on in the past the biological control of the Asian citrus psyllid, so I'm well familiar with uh, this, the citrus greening disease problem. And with that, I'll have uh, Logan introduce himself. Hi, everybody. I'm Logan Appenteller. I'm also an entomologist by training, uh, but I'm currently program specialist for the CBRE. And I've been with NIFA now for about four years. Thank you, Eric and Logan. And uh, Lubera Goswami, Dr. Bella Goswami is our division director. Um, and uh, so our program works closely with the USDA NARI board. And uh, Kate Lewis is the executive director of that program. And uh, she coordinates the Citrus Disease Subcommittee, uh, which is made up of industry representatives. And this team uh, formulates the priorities that uh, ECDRE follows. Next slide, please. So here are the topics we'll cover today. We'll have a NIFA overview, then we'll uh, provide an overview of the ECDRE program. We'll go through the request for pre-applications, the uh, FY24 ECDRE priorities. We will look at the pre proposal evaluation process and then we'll provide some additional information resources. Next slide, please. So, just to provide a, an overview for NEFA, which is the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, uh, NEFA provides funding support uh, to uh, Extra Mural Science Fund, it is a, an extra mural science funding agency within the USDA Research, Education, and Economics Mission Area. NEFA funding is appropriated by Congress, and NEFA invests in and supports initiatives that ensure the long-term viability of agriculture, that is U.S. agriculture. And NEFA provides funding and strategic leadership for programs that ensure groundbreaking discoveries in agriculture related sciences and, and technologies reach the people who can put them into practice. Next slide, please. So NEFA funds a lot of programs from animals to plants and everything that really touches agriculture. So this may include advanced technologies, natural resources, environment, and food science, a lot of areas that uh, are funded by NEFA, so uh, we're not limited only to plants, but also various uh, aspects of agriculture. Next slide, please. 
So then next we'll look at the, uh, an overview of the Emergency Citrus Disease Research and Extension Program. Uh, this program uh, was established uh, some years back, and its purpose is to support scientific research and extension act, uh, uh, activities, technical assistance, and development activities to combat citrus diseases and pests, both domestic and invasive, which pose eminent harm to United States citrus production and threaten the future viability of the citrus industry. Uh, ACDRE provides support for the dissemination and commercialization of relevant information, techniques, and technologies discovered pursuant to funded research and extension activities. Next slide, please. See, obje the objectives of this program is to bring nation's top scientists together with citrus industry representatives to find scientifically sound solutions to the devastating disease Wang Wang Bing, HLB, or citrus greening disease. The other objective is to encourage research teams to bring knowledge together to find solutions to combat and prevent HLB infection and to transition from component focused research to deploying research outcomes on farms. So, hopefully, this gives you an overview of the ECDRE program. And this slide is showing the, uh, the ECDRE pre proposal solicitation. And for this year, the ECDRE program under assistance listing 10.309 is soliciting three proposals to develop effective tactics and strategies to control Hong Kong being and its disease complex for financially sustainable citrus growing in the United States. NIFA requests three applications for the ECDRE program to address priorities identified by the Citrus Disease Subcommittee of the National Agricultural Research, Education, Extension, and Economics Advisory Board, or NARI for short, uh, through projects that integrate research, extension activities, and use systems-based transdisciplinary approaches to provide solutions to the U.S. citrus growers. Next slide, please. So here are the nine priorities uh, listed in order of importance as uh, directed by this CDS subcommittee. So the first priority is to develop commercial citrus varieties, rootstocks or science for both fresh and processed markets with the genetic resistance or tolerance to HLB using traditional breeding techniques or gene editing. The second priority is regional management or eradication of Asian citrus salad on commercial citrus groves and residential plantings. Management strategies should incorporate appropriate pesticide resistance management measures. The third priority is to optimize detection and surveillance programs for Asian citrus salad or and or Huang Long Bing. Detection and surveillance programs should incorporate all effective tools and tactics, including salad attractants, predictive models of salad movement and dispersal and others. The fourth priority is a cure for HLB infected trees and strategies for maintaining their productivity. Progress in this area can be made through the development of nutritional materials and their delivery, antimicrobials and their delivery, and others. The fifth uh, priority is a delivery system for therapeutics, nutrition, and other HLB solutions. So, as we all know, most Therapeutics available are not adequately delivered via fully application. And so we're looking for ways that these therapeutics can be delivered into the flowing of the plants. Next slide, please. The sixth priority is consolidation of screening efforts for intervention, intervention targets and reduction of candidate lists to include only those most worthy of advanced testing and commercialization. The seventh Priority is a reliable technique for culturing the Silas bacteria. This is the causal agent of uh, Bangalong being. The eighth priority is a better understanding of HLB stroke vector or citrus pathosystem, including flowing biology, the movement of Silas, and the therapy into, uh, 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 into and through the phloem, and the interaction of post pathogen and vector. In other words, the disease triangle. 
the last priority is greater understanding of the ecology and interactions of the citrus production system and the citrus greening disease complex, that is the, um, the pathogen itself and then the vector. So those are, those are the nine priorities. And remember, these are, are ranked in order. So that means the, the higher the ranking of the priority, the higher the weight will be given when funding decisions are being made. Next slide, please. So who is eligible to apply for ECDRE funding? Applications may only be submitted by federal agencies, national laboratories, colleges and universities, research institutions and organizations, private organizations and corporations, state agricultural experiment stations, cooperative extension services, individuals or groups consisting of two or more of the above entities. So we have received questions on whether international applicants can apply but this is a domestic program. So if you're international, you can apply together with a, a domestic uh, entity here in the US as a collaborator or a contractor. And just a reminder that no duplicate or multiple submissions are accepted and both, uh, the, both ap applications will be uh, removed from consideration if they are duplicate or uh, multiple submissions. Next slide, please. So here is a, a link where you can find uh, the information on the RF, uh, pre application request itself. Um, and the, the submission uh, is through grants.gov. Uh, the the, the, the grants.gov uh, link also has the, the information about this opportunity. The pre application deadline is March 28, 2024, 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's really important to keep this time. Uh, depending on your on your region where you are at Pacific time, that will be 2 p.m. Pacific time and um, 4 p.m. Central time. If you don't observe this time, your proposal may not be considered for review. So please uh, make sure that you keep this time. Uh, you submit before uh, this time uh, in absence. The funding opportunity is, is shown on the screen and the program code is ECDRI. Slide, please. So from here, I'll hand it over to Erica to take us through project and grant types as well as necessary documents uh, for your application. All right, thanks, Manuel. So for this program, we're only accepting um, integrated research and extension progress, and there are actually two types of grants that we are soliciting for. And this information is also on the request for pre-applications on page eight. So for the first type of grant that we're looking at here are large coordinated agricultural projects. These are big projects that are up to $15 million for a period of up to five years. And the idea here is to address national scale efforts by coordinating research and extension efforts um, in at least one of the goals identified by the Citrus Disease Subcommittee. A lot of times these CAP projects will address multiple goals of the Citrus Disease Subcommittee, multiple research priorities. These CAP projects, um, if when you apply for them, your application should leverage existing citrus and HLB research investments and coordinated efforts of multi-state, multi-institutional teams of interdisciplinary scientists, so biological, physical, and social scientists. They should also describe coherent and complementary integrative activities with your goal of developing a strategy or solution to HLB, preferably by the end of the project. They should propose the formulation, the formation of a public-private consortium, of other disciplinary groups to address one or more of these uh, of our ECDRE research priorities, which are, you know, Emmanuel already listed all of them. Support large-scale efforts for trials, demonstrations, coordinated testing across environments and screenings. Collaboration with cooperative extension ongoing grower efforts is highly encouraged. Um, and if you are invited to submit a full application, you will need to include a business plan for deliverables, have an advisory committee with citrus industry members on it, and plans for documenting project impacts and communicating these results to citrus producers and the public at large. The next type of grant are standard projects. And these are a bit smaller in scope. They have a budget of up to $1.5 million 
for a timeline of up to three years. And so these can provide more targeted uh, problem solving efforts that may be narrower in scope than a cap. And these are gonna be implemented at the farm level or commercialization of proven solutions or examination of innovative ideas that will address one of the goals identified by the Citrus Disease Subcommittee. Applications here should bring together research and extension components of agricultural knowledge systems around the problem area or activity. We would like to note that the, there is no matching, uh, you don't have to provide any matching funds. The matching requirement for all ECDR awards have been waived um, by a uh, congressional authority. So these, these awards are full awards and your indirect cost is allowable at 30% of the total federal funds awarded. And this all this information again is in the request for pre-applications on page 10. So again, the RFA is available online here. So we have we have that link. All of this information was already given by a manual, so I won't go over it too in grievous detail, but remember all of these have to be submitted by grants.gov and we anticipate awarding about eight to 10 awards. But again, this is the pre-application phase. We're, we are, uh, we, we will invite, you know, ho hopefully we will invite a minimum of, you know, around maybe we expect to invite 30 to 50% of those that we get pre-applications from to submit a full application. And of those we may, we anticipate to give eight to 10 awards. Key documents here include the project summary, which, it, which includes an abstract, our stake, stakeholder relevancy statement, which is a three-page document, and a few other documents that are listed in the RFA, and you can look it through the NIFA grants application guide. For the stakeholder relevancy statement, we this is three-page maximum, and we will stick to this. Um, requirement. If you go over, we will have to reject your application for non-compliance. So three-page match for the stakeholder relevancy statement with one-inch margins, 12-point font, 1.5 spacing font, and that 12 font does include your graphs and figures. This should include the title of the project preceded by if it's a standard project, SP or CAP, to indicate the type of project. You're going to give an estimated budget, but a, a detailed budget is not required, just the estimated total budget request. Part three is the significant and benefit, and that's consistent of different parts as well. So A, the first part would be the economic, environmental, social significance of the problem being addressed. B would be the potential deliverables for the citrus industry by the end of the project and specific milestones accomplished during the project. C, how the information developed during the project will be translated into actual recommendations or products delivered to the end users. Part four is stakeholder engagement, how stakeholders are, are being engaged and in defining the problem being addressed and determining project objectives, and also B, how stakeholders will be engaged in the project's development and evaluation. Part five is a project outline. This is one page maximum, and this is a list of project objectives, an outline of the methodology that will be used to achieve project goals. And then finally, part six is the experience of the project director and key co-investigators. You need to provide a description of the project's team's experience working with specific stakeholder community and the problem that would be addressed by the project. Your bio should be up to 100 words that can be included for each, but you will be able to list additional co-investigators in the full application if you're invited for one, but just keep this, uh, the experience of the co-PD and your co-investigators to a, a reasonable amount that fits that three page um, maximum guidelines for the stakeholder relevancy statement. One clarification I do wanna make is that um, we do not require letters of, of support from the Citrus Industry at this time. You will be able to include letters of support if you are invited to submit a full application. So the application submission, remember, NIFA only accepts electronic submissions of applications, and we have an, a step-by-step -step guide for NIFA grants applications available here. And we recommend this for you, especially if you've never submitted to the USDA NIFA before. It is different than NSF. 
all application documents do need to be in PDF format. And it and that includes your 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 your, your stakeholder uh, relevancy statement. So grants.gov may allow for other formats, but NIFA does not. So please make sure that you convert these documents into PDF and do not use third-party PDF builders. And with that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Logan Appefeller, to go over how your pre-application will be evaluated. All right. Thanks, Erica. Okay, everybody, I'm going to walk you through the remainder of these slides. So the ECDRE program has a two-phase review process, um, as has been previously explained. We have the relevancy review uh, done by a panel of citrus industry panelists, and then we have the scientific merit review. So the process can be summarized using the bullets on the screen here. So the Citrus Disease Subcommittee, or CDS, provides advice on the programmatic priorities, uh, which once again, you'll find them in the RFPA. Uh, they're the nine priorities that uh, Emmanuel went over in detail. Their request for pre-applications is then published. And then after pre-applications are submitted, those are subjected to a relevancy review by the citrus industry panelists. And then applicants are selected by the industry panel uh, to submit full applications. These full applications then are subjected to a scientific merit review by a team of interdisciplinary scientists. And when it's all said and done, both the reviews from the industry relevance panel, as well as the scientific merit panel, are integrated in the final ranking of the proposals. And then the list of awards is presented to the CDS, followed by awarding presentations. Now here we essentially have a snapshot of the pre-application evaluation process. So the pre-proposals or pre-applications, the terms are interchangeable here are assigned for review to at least three industry relevancy panel members. Most of the time, that's well, but at least three reviewers. Uh, and the industry panel members will produce individual reviews for each pre-proposal, evaluating strengths and the weaknesses. And these written reviews are used to begin discussions during the panels with other reviewers that are serving on the uh, relevancy panel. And through these discussions, panelists come to consensus on the final rating and ranking of pre-applications. And essentially the outcome of this pre-application -ap pre evaluation process is the determination of which applicants uh, will be invited to submit full applications. So here are the review criteria for the industry relevance review for all projects. One, the issues uh, addressed are relevant to the CDS approved ranked research priorities. Two, the described research and extension approach will result in impacts that are important to the target stakeholders. Three, stakeholders are involved in identifying and developing project goals and objectives and will be involved during the project implementation. Four, Information developed by the project team will be delivered to stakeholders that will allow them to implement new and or improved solutions to HLB by the project's end. And five, the project team has members who have worked with the target stakeholders in the past and have experience with the described research and extension approach. And here we have a brief list of tips uh, for you to keep in mind while you're developing your pre-applications. So successful ECDRE pre-applications are targeted for a grower audience. So keep in mind, these pre-applications will be reviewed by growers and members of the citrus industry. They should be easy to read and understand. They should not be duplicative with past HLB research. Uh, your project objectives, timelines, and deliverables should be clear and feasible. You must clearly show the participation of stakeholders in the development of the project goals and objectives, and the research results are useful and usable by the project staff. And so this here gives you an idea of the overall timeline of the ECDRE program, broken up into three phases, uh, the pre-proposal phase, full proposal, and the award phase. 
So the pre-proposal phase is where we're at now, uh, which began with the request for pre-applications being released online, uh, made available to you all. Uh, the pre-proposal due date this year is March 28th, and all the proposals that we receive will then go into the pre-proposal industry review. And as I said earlier, uh, the outcome of the pre-proposal industry review will determine which applicants are invited to submit full proposals. And once the full proposals are submitted, those will go through a scientific merit review. And then we get into the awards phase where your uh, awardees will receive proposal funding notifications and the awards will be finalized. And then we've got some additional information to share with you that uh, you might find helpful for putting together your free applications. So using the link on the screen here, you can find recently funded ECDRE awards. To stay up to date uh, on NIFA's upcoming deadlines, meetings, webinars, and requests for pre -app or for applications, uh, you can use the two links that are shown on this slide. And then here we have a variety of resources for you that's uh, you'll find helpful funding opportunities, competitive grants flowchart, NIFA's grant resources and policy guide information regarding indirect costs, a guide for preparing and submitting NIFA applications via grants.gov, and information on awarding grants. So we've covered a lot of information in this relatively brief presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, uh, the ECPRE program team. And lastly, this is NIFA's non-discrimination statement. I won't read the entire thing word for word, but essentially what this says is that the USDA is an equal opportunity employer and lender. And if you need to file a discrimination complaint, you can refer to the number provided on the slide. And that concludes the presentation. We thank you very much for attending. Thank you so much, Logan and Erica. Um, so at this point, we'll open it up for questions uh, that you may have. You can type your question in the chat box or in the uh, Q and A box. So I, I don't see any questions yet, but uh, one thing that uh, we would like to clarify a little bit is, um, so the slide we shared is showing that you can have up to six uh, copies in the um, uh, pre proposal stage, uh, but the RFA itself states are four uh, co-PIs are for CAP projects, and then two PIs are for our standard projects. So as Erica said, uh, for the pre-application level, um, you can keep this information to the minimum of three pages, but if you are invited for submitting a full proposal, there's no limit to how many uh, co-PIs you can have on your application. So, Oh, yeah. I think we may have a question in the chat. Um, see, so just uh, an inquiry, but um, see the other question, questions that have come before. I think we did clarify that there's no need for support letters at this stage. Um, and also that international applicants need to find a U.S. Uh, um, partner to, to be the one to apply, and then you can make an international be a collaborator or a copy on the grant, but this is a domestic program funding. And see, there's a question in the uh, Q and A box. Uh, can you elaborate on the limit of for PI uh, on the pre application? I think I already done that. Um, and then the other question is: Can we request a meeting with NPL to discuss the project before submitting the pre application? Erica, do you want to take that? Sure. Yes, of course you can request a meeting with us. We would be happy to meet with any potential applicants to discuss whether their their project idea uh, fits the objectives or potentially would be competitive in this program. 
So just uh, email is usually the best way to get a hold of us. So just uh, send an email to myself and Emmanuel, and we will uh, get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, thank you, Erica. There's a question here in the chat. Will you accept letters of support even though they're not required? Um, so we want to reject them, but they will not be used to, to weigh on on your proposal. So they, they do no harm. Uh, so yeah, you can submit them with your pre-application, but again, this won't be considered to evaluate your proposal. We, we encourage you to submit those letters of support if you're invited to submit a full application. Uh, we want to give, you know, because the citrus industry is busy, we want to give them a, a concise a review package to review. So we don't want them to have to scroll through letters of support. Um, that will come. You can cert, We encourage you to include those if you're invited to submit the full application. So I, I would encourage you to wait. Don't see any other questions in the chat or Q and A areas. So we'll give it another minute if anyone thinks of a question. But as Erica mentioned, should you have a need to um, reach to us for you know a, a chat or a, you know, via Zoom or Teams, we're more than happy to do that, or even via the phone call. Uh, and our phone contacts are listed in the RFA. So please feel free to reach out to us. There's a question here if we will be posting this presentation and the answer is yes, this is being recorded. And after it has gone through compliance, this will be posted on NIFA uh, YouTube channel. This has really been answered. Okay, we'll give it another extra minute in case somebody thinks of a question. And the other comment that we'd like again to emphasize is that make sure your documents you submit to NEPA are PDF. Uh, it's really sad when you when we receive applicants that are in one format, we can't even uh, read anything on those documents. The way the system works at NEPA is that uh, the any other formats will not be read by the NEPA system. So we only see stars and, and, and gibberish when we open these documents so that are not in PDF. And it's really sad that you know, a PD takes the time to develop the proposal or the pre-proposal, and then we can't read or, or accept it. So please make sure that the documents are converted to PDF before submitting them. Okay, so we've given it an extra few minutes and I don't see any questions. So uh, if there are no other questions, uh, and if you want to reach us later, please do that. Uh, but this will conclude uh, our Chicken of Assistance webinar. Thank you very much for attending, and we look forward to receiving your applications.